to the game between the Buccaneers and the Colts. Let's take you out to Indianapolis with our announcers, Spiro Ditas, Adam Archuleta, and Amanda Renner. JB, overcast skies, temperatures in the upper 30s, a little bit of rain here in Indianapolis, where this week we witnessed the end of an era as the Colts shockingly cutting ties with a player who's been the heartbeat of its defense, saying goodbye to Shaquille Leonard, all part of what's been an up-and-down season. But all that said, they are right in the thick of the chase in the AFC playoff picture. You see where they sit, just behind Buffalo and just one game back off the pace for that final wild card slot. Meantime, Tampa Bay, it's been a ragged year, sub 500, but look at where they sit. Tied with Atlanta for second place, just a game back behind the NFC South leading Saints. And with that, we say welcome to Indianapolis alongside Adam Archuleta. I'm Spiro Adidas. We'll hear from Amanda Renner here in just a couple of seconds. Arch, here we go. Again, the records aren't pretty. But these teams both still control their own destiny and have everything in front of them. Well, to me, the key word is is mojo. The Colts, they found their mojo in their two games before the bye. Can they get it back quickly? For Tampa, it's been a tough go here in the last six games. But if they want to have a say in this NFC South, getting their mojo starts today. So Indianapolis winning the two games prior to the bye that they had last week, and it was their defense really taking charge and leading things as the catalyst. Well, it's been a common formula for the Colts. When they win, their defense really comes to play. They play a suffocating brand. You see it, 19 points. They sacked the quarterback in their last two games nine times. They take the ball away, five interceptions, and Kenny Moore, two pick sixes against Carolina. Now, Sparrow, those were two bad football teams that were overmatched. Today, especially in the pass, passing game, it is an upgraded offense they're going to have to stop. It will be an Indianapolis defense that is going to look and feel a lot different with that stunning news that came down on Tuesday, Amanda, with the departure of Shaquille Leonard. Yeah, Zaire Franklin told us he was stunned when the news broke that Shaq Leonard, three-time pro bowler and team captain since 2019, had been released. Both guys are from that 2018 draft class, and he said they couldn't have come from more different backgrounds, but Leonard changed the way Franklin looks at the world forever. As for what's next, well, it's time for Franklin's podcast co-host, EJ Speed, to step in and make the impact the team believes he can. From a fifth-round pick in 2019 to battling for every opportunity he's been given, Franklin told us, Speed is my guy, and he's ready to take this next step. All right, Amanda, meantime, Tampa Bay got off to a 3-1 and one start. Everything looked good the first month of the season, but their loss in San Francisco last week, their fifth defeat in the last six games. Offense starting to show some signs behind Baker. Well, Baker Mayfield has had a solid season, and he's given them a chance to win football games. Listen, he is a confident quarterback. He's aggressive, and he is not afraid to get that ball down the field to his receivers. This receiving tandem, Sparrow's pretty good. It all starts with Mike Evans. Does it get better and more consistent over 10 years? And Evans, seven touchdowns already, and he can take over a game at any moment. Chris Godwin, he takes over in the middle, does all the dirty work. But Spiro, they've got to get him involved early. Only one target last week in the first half. That can't happen today. Couple of missing pieces and key pieces for Todd Bowles Buccaneers. No Levante David. He's been the nerve center of this defense for a number of years. Out with the groin. Jamel Dean on the shelf. The good news is that Devin White, who was a game time decision, is up. Will start. Pause there. Let to defer. Shane Stike at meantime. Boy, whatever happens from this point on, this season for the Colts, Arch has already been a success when you consider the debacle that was last year. Coaching change, all the dysfunction in that building. Crazy to think that he's got them in the playoff yeah. mix as we sit here in week 12. It's a low standard you got there, Spiro. But <laughs> yes, I think as they sit now, uh, nothing short of making the playoffs will be deemed a success. Matt Gay boots it away. Had a terrific season so far for the Colts as Tampa Bay will have it at the 25-yard line. So here is Baker Mayfield. Boy, what a whirlwind it's been for this young man. Fourth team in the last year plus. Of course, last year began with Carolina, ended up with the Rams. 
for the final five regular season games. Arch, what have you seen from him so I, far? I, I think he's he has been solid this year. And you go back last week, they played a pretty tough defense. It really is starting to come come into their own. I think they've got to start a lot faster. Not enough plays in that first half, and they know if they get scoring chances, they've got to convert. Quickly to the air, this is Chris Godwin. Got off to that slow start in that game last week before he came on over the final two quarters. And a good drive starter here as he is tackled just shy of the 30-yard line. Offensive starters, good news, Tristan Wirfs, their all-pro left tackle is up. He had been questionable this week with an ankle injury. And also Rashad White, who was added to the injury report yesterday, their number one running back with the knee, is also active. So second and five here, they'll go two tight ends as Mayfield will work from the gun. They can't off to White. Baker throwing on the run completes. That's Mike Evans, who's buried right after the catch. Appears to be a little bit short of that line to gain. So this Indianapolis defense, they begin life after Shaquille Leonard. Again, cut on Tuesday. We got the report from Amanda. No Juju Brents today. One of their starters at corner. Quad injury, third straight DMP for Brents. Baker gets it out first down and more. That's Cade on the tight end. Breaking a tackle gets inside Colts territory in what turns out to be a massive play for the Buccaneers. They pick up 24. Well, here he is. They're going to fake play action, and you got the tight end. He's going to block, and then he's just going to sneak out. And, you know, typically... You know, it appears one of the linebackers, either EJ Speed or Zaire Franklin, uh, get their eyes in the backfield and a huge conversion here to start the game. Boy, what a start for Otten, who dropped that potential touchdown in the end zone last week. As he tries to put that bad taste in his rearview mirror. Fresh set of downs at the Indy 42. This is White who has been much more effective as a pass catcher out of the backfield so far this season. As they just try to figure out how to push the right buttons against this hot Colts defense. Well, listen, they're going to have to have balance. That's for sure. They can't drop back uh, to throw the ball 53 times. Baker Mayfield had 46 attempts in that game last week against San Francisco. And, you know, they're the worst running offense in the National Football League. But, you know, don't tell them that. They really feel like the offensive line now is starting to come together. It may not look like much, but they believe if they can be patient, they'll pop a few runs. So what the Colts defense has done, this hot streak that they've been on. This is White running left. White breaking tackles, and he's going to have a first down run on a second down and six. This Tampa Bay offense, one of the eight teams that has not scored a touchdown on their opening drive of the game this season. But they are moving here at the start. Oh, and they get really a good, good work over there on that left side with Otten and then Tristan Wirfs. And you can see Rashad White. He's about th two or three yards into that other side of the line of scrimmage. You know, one thing you see a lot with this run game is how many times they get stuffed. Almost half of their attempts this season, they've got stuffed at or behind the line of scrimmage. Baker sets up the play action. Going to take a shot towards the end zone to Evans, and it's incomplete. Jalen Jones was with him step for step. Jones, the seventh-round pick out of Texas A&M, rookie, who's become a bigger piece as the season has gone on. Now you can expect this. I, I believe that in this game, Tampa Bay is, is going to be aggressive. And you think of Mike Evans, one of the premier down-the-field receivers. Spiro, can you believe that last week, as far as explosive plays down the field, that is the first time this season that Evans had not recorded a passing reception over 20 yards. I like when you dig deep, my friend. Yes. This is White Boy taking on Tackler's physical run as he tries to get downhill, chiseling his way through the teeth of that Colts defense. And right there, John with Zaire Franklin as White picks up a half dozen. We talked about how good this defense uh, played in their last game against New England, but New England was able to run that football uh, right inside against this defense. and. 
For the second time here on this drive, Maker, Baker Mayfield has a third and less than five. Mayfield fires and completes. Very tight space as he finds Trey Palmer. First down, Tampa Bay. Well, what did Baker Mayfield tell us about playing against the Colts' defense and their style? You know that they're going to be in almost the same defense the majority of the game. And what that does, they know that the Colts' defend defenders know exactly where they're supposed to be. So the windows are going to be tight. The key is how precise can you execute, and that is a great example for Tampa Bay. Little misdirection here. Baker feeling the heat, just throws it into the turf, looking in the direction of White. And everyone we spoke to yesterday, Todd Bowles, Baker, their offensive coordinator, Dave Canales, they all said the same thing. We're starting to show some signs. Remember, new quarterback, new offensive play caller. It's taken time, but they're moving the ball large. Last week, 22 first downs in the loss. Well, here you go. But what's what was the number one topic this week? Well, there's a lot of topics, injuries being one of them, but it's it's red zone offense, isn't it? You know, they really felt opportunities last week. They drove the football, but they just couldn't find the plays to be able to turn those into points. Baker again fakes the handoff, and it's deflected at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Julian Blackman got a hand on it. And that's going to force the Buccaneers into a tough third and long here as we cross the 10 minute mark. Julian Blackman coming off the edge and, and that ball is tipped. And now you got third and ten and you, you've seen the last couple plays. You saw that Indianapolis Colts defense get some pressure and affect the pass. Here they come off the edge. Bliss Baker felt it complete. Evans going airborne. They're going to mark him short of the end zone. Just an amazing catch by Evans, the All-Pro, a pickup of 19, first and goal. Well, two things. You can't stop this when they throw it that high, and Evans elevates the way he just did. And a little bit of premature movement there before the snap. Looked like Samson Ebukam came across early. Boy, it was like Evans was levitating on that catch. But here's one of the small details, Spiro. Uh, Gus Bradley brought an all-out blitz. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 52. Half the distance to the goal line. We play first. 